Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Amore Cordless Tire Inflator. So let's get started. House on the Mend. Now, I'm not paid nor sponsored by Amorate. They simply reached out and sent me this unit for free for my independent review. So this video is going to consist of next unboxing it, initial setup, looking over the components, charging the unit. Then we're going to put it to some rigorous testing. So please stay tuned or skip to that section. It's the most important. And finally, I'll give you my pros and cons. So here we go. All right, here's everything that comes in the very decent packaging. You have the unit itself with a nice big display screen and big buttons. So if it's cold outside and you have gloves on, you should still be able to work it. I like that. Uh, if the battery runs low, you have this car charger uh, adapter that can plug into the bottom. This is the charging cable. This charges via USB-C, which I like. Uh, this is the main hose right here that screws into the top. And this uh, little nozzle here rotates and can screw right onto your tire or the accessories that come with it. If you want a little tiny bit more hose and you prefer this more standard kind of bike pump, vehicle tire clasp you can use this one but it screws in to this hose not up top it also comes with a bag that has the Amorit logo on it uh, lastly we have a very poorly written instruction manual starting with the fact that they even misspelled instruction right on the front uh, it also has tons of grammatical errors um, and wasn't proofread at all. Look at this first precaution. This machine is not suitable for inflating tires of large and super heavy vehicles, such as large trucks and large trucks. And it just goes on from there. Just poorly written, poorly edited, obviously um, put into Google Translate or something to get it into English from Chinese. Let's get a weight on the unit. It's pretty stout 1 pound 7 ounces so before we go over the many nice features on this unit the manual says to charge it first so this unit can handle up to a 10 watt charger which is kind of a shame I wish you could get something bigger like this 45 watt charger but 10 watt is a pretty standard household charger so let's go ahead plug it in right down at the bottom here is the electrical port on the left is the USB port this unit once fully charged can be a power supply so you can charge your electronic devices uh, it's only five watts so it's that's not going to be a big charging capability but nonetheless less it's there this one right here in the middle is the USB-C that we will be using to charge it and the cigarette lighter adapter goes into the one on the right so I'm interested to see how long it takes to charge so let's plug the unit in, start our timer. As you can see here from the factory, it's coming with two bars. So it is 65% uh, or so charged already from the factory. Let's get a temperature baseline reading and see if it heats up at all during the charging process, 81 degrees. All right, where were we? I hardly remember because it took an hour and 24 minutes to charge a battery that was already two thirds full. Let's check the temperature. It went up just a few degrees Fahrenheit, nothing bad. But they are pretty honest in the manual where they say charging time is between four to six hours. That sounds about right. So let's go over some of the features. First, let's install the hose. There's a threaded port 
right up on the top here where we will just screw in the hose. It feels good and tight. So let's turn it on. Long hold of the power button turns it on. Now it comes from the factory set to PSI, which is good. That's what we use here in America, but you also have the capability of bar, kilopascals and kilograms per centimeter squared. And you can change those with this button down here. It would be a long hold to switch. And we'll leave that at PSI. Now this same button with a quick press will change the mode you're in. So we went from car to bicycle to motorcycle to a basketball or soccer ball. And the cool thing about each of these settings is car is automatically set to 36 PSI. And then you can adjust that by each push of the button is a one half PSI. It blinks for a bit and then we'll uh, stay on that. Let's check and see if it remembers our last setting. If you go down to bicycle, it's preset at 45 PSI. Motorcycle is 32. And ball is nine. Now this setting here, where there is no icon, has a large parameter that you can set from three to 150 PSI. So every other mode has a range. For example, the car mode has a range from 26 to 50 PSI. The bicycle mode has a range from 30 to 65. PSI. Motorcycle has a range from 26 to 45 PSI. And the ball setting has a range of 4 to 16 PSI. Well, what happens if, like me, you have a van where the tire pressure needed uh, in the back is higher than the standard uh, range of 50 PSI for the car setting. Well, in that case, you can go to this setting where you have um, that three to 150 PSI capability and you can program in whatever setting you want if it's outside of the normal ranges. So that's a pretty neat function. So we've gone over four of the five buttons so far. We haven't yet touched on this one, which is the light setting. You can see it's got a sunburst on it. So there are three settings. There's a flashlight. And then blinking red lights for safety. So let's turn off the light that I have in my box here. And let's turn on the flashlight. So that is not a strong beam of light. And it doesn't, it's not affected by any of the buttons to adjust the brightness. But it is just enough light to get to the tire stem, connect it. Now if you press the button again, it turns to a slow flashing red. Once more is a fast flashing red. So you could set those out to blink for safety purposes uh, if you wanted. It's another added feature. All right, lights back on. Let's listen to the motor. Watch this when we click over to the car again. Notice that it did not remember our previous setting of 35 PSI it switched back to 36. Let's try it again. So every time it goes back to its standard mode, whether or not you make changes to it. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Fairly loud to my ears. It's 
But standard to the other tire inflators that I have, we are in a closed box here, so that might add to it. But uh, sounds very standard. So next, let's look at some of the accessories that you can put on the hose. Down here, there's a little rubber uh, compartment, and inside there are several accessories. They're not that easy to get out and they're kind of clipped in so you really do have to get in there with something and pry them out. It took me so long to get this one out that the uh, power actually timed out. All right, let's go over what we have. So these two are uh, connections that will go onto the tube and with these you can focus air into inflatable pull toys and and that sort of thing. Um, maybe air mattresses with small uh, port openings. This one here everyone should recognize this is your standard uh, basketball, soccer ball, football inflator needle here. Very standard. This one is how you neck down to bicycles that have um, a different type of uh, valve. I think it's like the straighter valve. Now this one, this is to screw into the hose port and it becomes an emergency window breaker. So you would take the hose off screw this in and this is supposed to be an emergency window break if you're stuck in your vehicle now this seems quite gimmicky to me first of all it's very hard to remove from this port but let's say you crash into a river or body of water you're sinking and you need to smack the window out so you can extricate yourself by the time you find wherever you've put this is, if it's not right in your glove box or right in your center console, and then you open it up and you pull that one tool out and you screw that tool in and then you grab and start trying to get yourself out the window, I think you will have uh, wasted quite a bit of time. And uh, therefore, I don't think this is a serious item unless you're going to leave it always installed on there. I, I just... I think this is one more thing that they could claim this tool can do and thus it seems to be a gimmick to me. Nonetheless, we've got a full charge. Let's put the hose back on, take it outside and put it through its paces. What we're looking at here is the back tire to my daughter's 2006 Land Rover LR3 that we are refurbishing. And instead of looking on the tire itself for the proper inflation you want to instead go to the driver's side door open it up and look for this type of sticker right here and as you can see for this car the front pressure is 33 psi and the rear tires should be 42 psi so let's hook up our unit we're just going to twist the hose on long hold to put it to turn it on and we are at 40.5 psi if we go to the vehicle we can then go up to whoops well went fast 42 psi it'll set that then we just press the button And I really like how it, once it reached 42, it kept going for a bit so that when it stopped, the pressure didn't lower in the hose. And now all we have to do is just untwist it as fast as we can. Boom. That wasn't much air escape at all. All right. All right. I love this bike stand for working on our bikes. Let's go ahead and check the tire pressure. 
on this one. So just like on a car tire, you screw on the hose, long hold to start it. Let's switch over to bicycle and it goes to 45 pounds as its standard or default. And we're at 21, so let's get up there. Well, that seems good enough to me. These feel really firm. So if your bicycle tire has a small Presta valve like you see here, the first thing you would do is grip that little knurled piece and unscrew it counterclockwise to loosen the valve. Then you would attach the supplied adapter, then thread on the hose as normal and inflate to your desired PSI. Well, as you might be able to tell from my shirt, we're getting ready for our American Independence Day celebration, the 4th of July, and we're gonna have company over, so I wanna fill up a couple balls here. We've got uh, a basketball that's a little squishy, and the same with this soccer ball. So if you look right where the nozzle goes in, right around that area will be what you want to inflate the ball to. So this basketball wants to be seven to nine pounds, and this soccer ball wants to be four to six pounds. So let's go into our little accessory kit here on the bottom. We'll pull out the needle. We'll thread the needle right into the hose. And then it says to moisten the tip. So you can just put that right in your mouth and lick it if you want. Or if you have chapstick handy, you can just moisten that tip just a little bit. And that helps you not to damage this little port. We'll slide that right in there. Turn on our unit. And it's reading nothing. Let's go down to the ball setting. And remember it um, goes naturally or defaults to nine PSI. So let's go to six. And there is obviously a lot less volume in a soccer ball. So that went really quick. And then let's do the same for our basketball. So we're going to set that up to nine. Pretty easy. Well, the included tip just broke on the fourth ball. Well, once I put in a quality needle, I was able to fill every ball you see in this bin without even dropping the battery one bar. So if we look at my Ram ProMaster van here, we'll see the tire pressure for the front is 65 and the rear is 80. And so this is a perfect example of when we're gonna need to use that other mode where we can set our own parameters higher than the standard vehicle mode. All right, let's turn it on. And we're supposed to be at 65 because it's the summer months, we're actually sitting at 69. So that's interesting. Let's see if we can deflate it. I like how it gets going faster. Let's see what happens. Nope, nothing. Good. 
So we're out here volunteering at our daughter's softball fireworks stand. And here's the trailer we transported in. So we'll take this opportunity to check all the tires. If you look on what would be the driver's side, you'll find the sticker just like in the driver's door. And as you can see here, 50 PSI. And it's really bright out here, but as you can see, we're only at 25 on this tire, so I've got it set to 50. Let's see how long that takes. I'm gonna set my uh, stopwatch. All right, we are eight minutes in. And only up to 38. Okay, about 14 minutes for that one. That was at 25 PSI. This second one, oof, is only 19. So after just under 15 minutes, this one quit and it won't power up. I think it might've overheated. Let's look. Ooh, 116 degrees, so that's more than the ambient temperature by about 10 degrees or 20 degrees or so. Let's look at the hose that usually gets really hot. Yeah, about the same. So it turns out it did not overheat. It just completely depleted the remaining two thirds of the battery to inflate one tire that was down to 19 PSI. So to give it the benefit of the doubt, I want to try another scenario with this uh, Toyota Tacoma. This is a mid-sized pickup truck here in America, and it's riding on the very popular BF Goodrich KO2s. So we're going to simulate that we've been off-roading with this vehicle that is four-wheel drive and has, based on its clearance, some uh, capabilities in that respect. So if you're going on uh, sand, snow, or kind of rocky area, this isn't a rock collar, but kind of rocky area, you want to air down your tires to give them a wider footprint and more grip. So I've done that very modestly here for our scenario. I've aired them down to 20 PSI from their preferred 35. So with a full charge, let's uh, pretend we just got through off-roading and we wanna air our tires back up before driving home at highway speeds. Now it is 97 degrees Fahrenheit in Las Vegas right now. I'm gonna put this guy in the shade Let's set our timer and see how long it takes. All right, nine minutes, 25 seconds to get us up to 35 PSI. And we did not drop at all on the battery. You can take a reading, 121 degrees. So we are, what is that? Like 25 degrees above ambient temperature. All right, about the same time and still no indicator that we've dropped any on the battery level we have jumped up to about 145 degrees though we're getting to oven met territory seven minutes 35 seconds we've now dropped one bar so according to the battery level indicator we have roughly what two-thirds of the battery left let's get a temperature reading uh, it's remaining consistent, 143. All right, by the fourth tire, it has shut itself off and it sounds like it's leaking. It is also so hot that I need to use an oven mitt just to carry it. And let's see how we did. It's lower than when we started because it started leaking out of the hose. Oh, that's not good. All right, if we plug it into the cigarette lighter adapter, even when it's completely depleted, it will turn on. And the cord is plenty long enough to get even to the back tire of our truck. 
Well, after testing this unit for several days, I feel confident that I can give you the pros and cons. So let's start with the pros. This unit is small, compact, and lightweight. I love the large screen and the large buttons. I like that it has a flashlight just in case something happens at night and you gotta head out to inflate a tire. I love that it's charged by USB-C, that is great. I really like the main hose and the five different preset modes. Now I think this unit would be ideal for a vehicle that needs to partially inflate one or two tires or a low PSI vehicle such as a UTV, this could easily handle all four tires. With that being said, let's go over the cons. First, the overall build quality is substandard. The body itself scratches very easily as well as the glass or plastic screen. I never once operated this machine with it on the screen, but nonetheless, as you can see here, it got all scratched up just from transporting it back and forth over the course of a couple days. As you saw, the needle for inflating balls was very substandard. In fact, I have never had a needle break after being inserted into only three or four balls. So that is among the cheapest quality I've ever seen in an accessory. Next would be the battery life. So I think that the minimum onboard battery capacity should be enough to mildly inflate four tires. And as you saw over the course of two separate tests, this unit cannot handle that. The sticker on the back of the unit, as well as the manual, both say you need to charge this unit at least every month to maintain the batteries that are in it. And that's a lot of work for something that you want to stow in your vehicle, or in my case, my wife or daughter's vehicle. In fact, I wouldn't go anywhere with this unit without the supplied cigarette lighter adapter because once it goes down one bar, there's no telling how fast it's going to be completely depleted and cut out on you, which happened to me twice. Next would be on multiple occasions after inflating no more than two tires, I found this unit to be so hot that I couldn't comfortably pick it up and carry it away. So I think it should have a rubberized finish to it such as this unit here that would help your hands from getting burned by this unit. While I'm very happy that it came with this little accessory door down here, I did find it very difficult to open. It took multiple attempts to get this little rubber piece to let go and open up. I think there should be a tab of some sort uh, installed on it for easier opening. Speaking of accessories, I didn't even attempt to inflate any pool toys or air mattresses because the air coming out of this hose would take forever. And as we've clearly seen, the battery life probably wouldn't last. If you're looking for a uh, inflator for those sorts of items, I would recommend something like one of these two units here that is high airflow, but low PSI. You're gonna get a much more satisfying inflation out of these. And they have these long necks on them that um, you can stick into the port of a small uh, inflatable toy, or you can remove these and inflate larger air mattresses without having to hold the small little nozzles that come with this unit the entire time. Now I would have three bits of feedback for Amore. First would be that the shell needs to be rubberized or converted over to plastic so it doesn't overheat and burn someone's skin. Uh, next, I would get rid of these unnecessary parts this gimmicky little window break, and this extra hose that has to be attached to this hose is unnecessary. Instead, what I would do is take that money and uh, put it into a better needle and a better screen that, or at least add a couple screen protectors like you get with a cell phone so that when you're storing this unit in its bag, it doesn't get all scratched up. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more viewers like you. 
sharing also really helps. So if you know anyone else in your off-roading community or your preparedness community, please share this video with them. It's really easy. You just hit the little arrow button down at the bottom and send it to whomever you want or post it on any of your social medias to get the word out about the quality and concerns over this product. Uh, also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content. I have a lot more tool review videos to go, as well as we're in the middle of a van build series that I think you might enjoy. It's really easy and free. You just click on uh, subscribe, or if you watch me on Rumble, on follow, it really helps the channel. I'm gonna leave a link to this unit in the description below. Full disclosure, that will be an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on it and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify all the time it takes to set up multi-camera angles and get the proper lighting to make these videos. Now I'd like to thank Amorate for having the courage to send me out a unit for my independent review with no preconceived agreements on what I was going to say. I think it takes a lot of courage for a company to do that. And some companies in my experience aren't willing to do that. They want to watch the video ahead of time and give feedback. And I refuse to make those videos. So uh, we should congratulate Amorate for having the courage to put out this pro uh, product for public uh, review. And hopefully they take some of my minor suggestions and make an improved product. Until next time. Thank you for watching.